Okay, so this next video lecture is for our module number 11. So this is entitled Enterprise Resource Planning or ERP Systems. Okay, for our uh, topic, so we have the ERP, its configuration, the data warehousing, the risk associated with ERP implementation, and the implications for internal control and auditing of the ERP. Okay, so to start with, let us discuss about the Enterprise Resource Planning or ERP. So basically, uh, ERP, this is defined as the ability to deliver an integrated suite of business applications. So this is a tool that shares a common process and data model which covers a broad and deep operational end-to-end -end processes. So it will include finance, HR, distribution, manufacturing, service, and the supply chain as a whole. So basically, it involves all of the functions and the departments of an entity. So the ERP applications, it automates and also supports uh, various administrative and operational business processes across uh, the different industries which can include uh, the line of business, customer facing, uh, administrative and the asset management aspects of the enterprise. So ERP also um, are complex and uh, expensive in uh, it is expensive and some organizations actually struggle to define uh, the business benefits so that's why for them it's a uh, very uh, hard to implement okay and uh, use ERP as an aid okay, to management but once they are able okay to implement it and um, they the, the entity also have identified okay what are the benefits uh, to its uh, entirety when using the ERP so that's when uh, this is very useful okay and um, it actually aids the, the management and control okay of everything that's uh, going on like the activities and the processes okay within the uh, business entity so business benefits actually are in four areas so it can be a catalyst for business innovation a platform for business process efficiency and standardization as well as IT cost savings so these are the benefits that ERP can provide in an organization so most enterprises they focus on the last two areas that is standardization and the cost savings okay because they are um, the easiest okay among the four to be quantified however the first two often have the most significant impact innovation and efficiency on the enterprise so i think it's very important that the entity is able to manage and balance all of these benefits and they are able to identify uh, and include it as part of the objective of uh, employing the ERP in their system. So what about in configuration of our ERP system? So basically, uh, ERP configuration is one of the most crucial steps in the implementation process so this part makes the erp system effective with improving productivity and efficiencies within organ and organization so that is it's not one size fits all product so it it should be customized okay, for whatever the entity needs and according to uh, the nature of their business and other factors as well so for every organization, ERP software will function differently to best meet the company's own data, parameters, fields, and workflow in order to ensure that the employees are receiving and sharing accurate information with one another and also to make sure that um, 
the processes and the uh, the flow of information in data are uh, what the entity intends to or expects to be. So proper configuration of the ERP system is very important for ensuring both the financial and uh, reporting accuracy. Okay. So prior to the implementation of the ERP software, uh, usually uh, the entity can start by finding the platform that best matches with the business process and understand the needs of uh, each department. So failure to do this can result in spending thousands of wasted uh, resources on add-ons and additional customization if uh, the entity is not able to include okay, what is important. Although it is a difficult task, so it is not impossible to learn how to configure their ERP system. However, um, there are consultants okay, that exist for a reason. But of course, you have to pay a fixed price or commission uh, to uh, companies who offer uh, both on-premise as well as on online instructions to do so and implement. So, uh, this, is what, uh, this will help also in uh, appropriately implementing the ERP system. So, it is highly recommended that individuals with limited IT knowledge should have a consultant. Okay. So because as clients who fail to successfully implement the ERP system by themselves are just costing themselves more money in the long run. So that's why very important. It's very important that uh, consultants should be engaged. Okay. Because this is a technical aspect also of, of, um, uh, of uh, or technical type of uh, system or software that uh, should be implemented in the in entity okay so what about data warehousing so basically data warehousing this is a secure electronic storage of the information in a business or other organizations so the goal of warehousing the data is to create a trove or a historical data that can be retrieved and analyzed to provide useful insight into the organization's operation. Meaning to say it is like storing the data and whenever it is needed, the entity can easily uh, retrieve it for reporting purposes and other uh, purposes as well. So data warehousing, this is a very important component of business intelligence. So. That wider term encompasses the information infrastructure, the modern businesses use to track their past successes and even failures, and also to inform uh, their decision for the future. So this is how data work warehousing is uh, important. So the need to warehouse the data evolved as a business began relying on computer systems. Okay, to create, file, and retrieve important business documents. So the concept of data warehousing actually was introduced in 1988 by the IBM researchers Barry Davlin and Paul Murphy. Okay, so we owe it to, to them. So the data warehousing is designed to enable the analysis of the historical data for future uh, decision making as well. Okay, so comparing the, the consolidated uh, data from the multiple heterogeneous sources will provide insight to the performance of the company in the future. So the data warehouse is designed to allow the entity to run queries and analysis on their historical data from the transactional resources. So the data added to the warehouse uh, do not change and cannot be altered okay so this is very important uh, the warehouse is the source that is used to run analytics uh, from the past events with a focus on changes over time so warehouse data must be stored in a manner that is also secure reliable easy to retrieve and easy to manage so these are the feature 
features of data warehouse that the entity should maintain okay so that they were, will be able to retrieve the data with reliability okay so this is an example of an illustration of uh, data warehousing so we have here the data sources so they include operational system okay from the, the files okay uh, staging area and then the warehouse okay, where the, the the information is stored and then we also have the data marts okay where this uh, data from the warehouse can be used okay, by the de purchasing department the sales department and the inventory and this uh, data can also be used by the ana for analysis reporting and mining of the data okay, to be useful in decision making so that's how it works okay, so this is just a simple illustration on how uh, data warehousing works for the entity okay what about the associated risks with the ERP implementation. So I think I uh, in uh, the sort the resource where I have taken this, uh, they enumerated nine possible risk. Okay, so the first is failure to redesign the business process to fit the software. Um, there is a strong desire, actually, okay, as mentioned earlier, to fit the new ERP system to the current process, but this is hardly. Uh, the case. In fact, uh, the right thing is to redesign it okay, to the current processes to fit the purchased uh, to, fi uh, to fit to purchase an ERP system. So meaning to say um, here as mentioned earlier in the introduction, um, it is very important that the entity should identify the benefit and their needs okay, so that they will be able to implement the right ERP software for their uh, system okay, that will work well for them. So the reality is neither option is easy. So actually it is very difficult for most uh, for the most uh, business to change the old or existing processes and customize it to the ERP system to fit their processes. So this is actually uh, costly and very time consuming. So in view, this is the biggest ERP implementation risk. Okay, redesigning the business process to fit the software because I think um, there are process, certain processes or activities that is uh, very hard for the entity to identify and uh, to to actually uh, define. So that's why uh, it's also difficult for them to implement it in the ERP system. So that's the problem okay and also a familiarity of the old in which uh, they are or the entity are uh, having a hard time in accepting the new okay with this erp implementation so the second is lack of senior management support so of course this is very important because support of top management is very important for the accomplishment of the project objectives so it's uh, it is easy for senior managers to become the sponsor but very difficult to let go the cru crucial team member for the pilot testing or user training so the, uh, the unfortunate fact is uh, the people who need to be trained as super users are the same key people who run the business so I think there is um, some kind of uh, conflict uh, that's why uh, the support is lacking okay to give time away from the desk as they are too afraid to miss the sales okay delivery to the customer is of the most common erp implementation risk so meaning to say they they do not uh give time to learn and implement and embrace the new because they are afraid of the effect if they will give more time Okay, in accessing and uh, knowing about this implementation okay so inefficient training therefore these are the results okay and uh, reskilling of end users so a number of firm learned that investment in training and reskilling this the employees ha were higher than expected 
because most ERP implementation comes with deadlines that need to meet. Um, as a result, there is hardly enough time to train these people and give them skills they need to reach the satisfactory performance. So this is another risk. Okay, the next is lack of ability to recruit and retain qualified systems developer. So because many organizations found it difficult to recruit and retain good ERP specialists um, because uh, these people are high paying. Okay. The developers of the biggest market share of the ERP vendors like SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, Dynamics, and N4, they are in high demand and they move from one consultancy project to another. So not finding an in-house ERP specialist could be a significant risk. What about if uh, the, the software will crash or there might be some technical errors okay, that will exist so who will uh, help the entity in resolving such problems okay, so that's a risk another is inability to obtain full-time commitment of the employee to project management and project activities so this is actually the same with point number two because it might be difficult to get managers and employees to commit to project management roles because they may be uncertain about what responsibilities will still be open to, for them once they are transferred okay, from their uh, positions. Or in some cases, uh, there's no backup for their job while busy in implementing and testing, a backlog of work, set upset customers, and compounding stress as a result. Okay. Another is lack of integration. So once ERP is implemented or about to be implemented, it is very important that key business processes cover the, these areas which relates to feasibility, requirements, prototyping, and implementation of ERP functionalities. So these areas are the source of many issues later on in the implementation. And uh, also, um, the implementation increasingly include technical work. Okay, through enhanced configuration uh, of the features and the need for extensive integration also with other systems. For example, uh, integrating financial supply chain or quality software and tools. So another example would be old metrics, which was the lifeblood to measure the business is no more available. Okay, as they used, hence the process and systems functionalities must fit to each other for proper integration so again this uh, stems from the lack of uh, defining the benefit and uh, defining uh, the process or uh, the activities within the entity because again uh, ERP is quite technical so there might be some problem uh, in the translation of this manual system into the software Okay, so that's where the problem comes in another is lack of change management so it is very easy to take for granted that all employees will accept that implementing an ERP is a good thing so it might not be the case when you talk to the employer who is using the same old system so this is what we are talking about earlier because they are very uh, af they are afraid to lose the old and embrace the new so um, for example, they are already using the old system for 10 years and they think that uh, they are doing just fine okay, for the business and customers. So these people firmly believe if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay? So the people who know most in business and are very good at their job sometimes can be the biggest roadblock of this deployment. Okay. So, hence, imposing significant ERP implementing risk. So, therefore, uh, it is important to launch a change in a management program to make them understand why business and they have to go through the pain and why the grass is greener on the other side. Okay. Another is poor technology planning. So, of course, lack of adequate technical expertise and technology infrastructure for supporting the project. So, the ERP implementation 
uh, risk factors includes, of course, uh, the newness of the technology. They need hardware and software components, the application size, the scope, number of users, team diversity, application of complex and failure of technology to meet their specification. And lastly, is less than awesome project management. So let's accept it. Implementing ERP is a massive project and lasts anything between 18 to 24 months or more. So you see how investment should be uh, given up in implementing this ERP system. So less than awesome project management in any business is significant ERP implementation risk. So the extent of risk of project cost and time overrun due to the lack of a measurement for the system or for assessing and controlling the project risk depends on the project size, experience with the new technology and the project infrastructure. So however, the ERP is very useful. So at the end or, uh, or on the other uh, hand or, or on the other side of it are the setbacks so these are the limitations or the risks okay so what about uh, the implications aside from the risk so what if the erp is implemented so what is its effect on the internal controls and auditing so for the transaction and authorization of course controls are needed to validate transactions before they are accepted by other modules. So ERPs are more dependent on programmed controls than on human intervention. So that's why the, uh, the entity should manage the access and altering of the data okay, to ensure that uh, the transactions are still validated. For segregation of duties, uh, manual processes that normally require segregation of duties are often eliminated because in ERP it's already automated. So audit trail is eliminated in this case. User role. Predefined user roles limit a user's access for certain functions and data. So this is one uh, good thing I think for ERP. In terms of supervision, so the supervisors need to acquire a technical and operational understanding of the system. So the employee-empowered philosophy should not eliminate supervision to make sure that at least control is uh, present. Accounting In terms of accounting records, so corrupted data may be passed from external sources and from legacy systems and there might be loss of paper and the audit trail. In terms of access control, critical concern with confidentiality of information, and the question is who should have the access to what. So this is very important to uh, the entity to define okay, and to give access to. In terms of access to data warehouse, data warehouses often involve sharing of information with suppliers and customers. So the entity should know until to what extent they should uh, give access to uh, this information okay in terms of contingency planning so keeping a business going in case of disaster key role of service servers requires backup plans redundant serves servers or shared servers and lastly for independent verification uh, traditional verifications are meaningless in ERP and needs to shift from tra transaction level to overall performance level Okay, so those are the different um, effects of implementing ERP with our internal controls and auditing.